Welcome to Awaken with Victoria Bond. I'm your host, Victoria, and I am absolutely honored to bring you this podcast where we will be getting raw, real, turning up consciousness, removing the old energies that do not align, and turning up our capacities as human beings and spiritual beings. I will be bringing you mediumship. I will be bringing you channels. I will be bringing you points of view that will shift your perspective and realign your body, your mind, and your soul. Enjoy this ride. This comes from my heart to yours. And know that while you're listening to this, indeed, you are helping to create this. Enjoy the ride, and I'll see you inside. I'd love to discuss judgment with you. Judgment is one of those things that we were taught from a very early age. Uh, We were taught it like literally consciously, like watch your judgment. This person's wrong. This person's right. Do this. Don't do that. And somewhere we got confused on the energy of judgment. Now we're barely going to touch the surface today, but I really wanted to offer to you some of the channels that have been coming through and kind of riff on the word judgment. What I find is that judgment is very conditioned, but it's also very like infused into our system. It's very, very programmed in and like I said, conditioned. So this is literally everywhere, everywhere from the television to the way we've been brought up from making decisions every day. And now judgment is not a bad thing. It's not a bad thing. But the energy that we attach to it can be of a higher or lower expression, meaning it can be like a lower type of energy. So that expression that we bring out is kind of a sinking, kind of heavy, more darker expression of judgment. or It can be a lighter, more open, more conscious, more flowy, more expansive expression. Now, let me explain, right? So when anything is too heavy, when anything is too solid or dense or negative, it's more dark, right? It's heavier. And that is where we stop creating. We cannot create when we're in this essence of judgment. But if we find ourselves judging and we use that judgment to create more consciousness, more creativity, more community and connection, then it's not actually negative at all. It can be expansive and light and flowy. But We must not put those full stops at the end. We must not make it dense. We must not make it one-sided or one way. We must not really get a tunnel vision on what is right or wrong or what is good and bad. When we are in this higher essence and expression of judgment, it means that we're using the awareness that we are having and creating more, which means we must be in the question of what we are feeling and knowing and being, what we are expressing with no judgment at all. It's really, really interesting because when I first started learning about judgment, I started noticing all the mirrors around me. So the external world around me became one gigantic mirror and I would find myself judging somebody for what they said or how they live or what their relationship is like or what they chose or whatever. Like we're in a world of judgmental judgments, right? (laughs) So I definitely don't have any shame on this. Because what I did, instead of going dense and heavy and and making it like this lower, darker, heavy expression of judgment, I would go to the questions. So why am I judging this? What is the mirror here that I am judging? And how can this help my growth and my expansion? How can this help me grow and become more creative and become more conscious? What is the mirror here? For instance, if I was judging somebody, I would simply say, 
what is it that I'm judging within this person that is also within me? Because I'm not judging them at all. I'm judging me. You will find that the most judgmental people are actually the harshest on themselves. They are so judgmental towards themselves, not in the light, expensive expression of, you know, light and creating more, but in a darker sense of shame and guilt, um, connecting into to feelings that are of a lower vibration. So to be judgmental is to be more, I suppose, not as conscious as those who are more in the question of how can we create more. To be judgmental really is this heaviness. And I'm trying to speak to the energy here. So can you feel what I'm saying? Don't try to just figure it out with your head, but can you feel what I'm saying? When somebody starts speaking about others in a judgmental form about their parenting or their relationship or their business or their the way that they are, it literally changes the vibration of the room. It changes the frequency that's around. And it, all of a sudden, it becomes different. It becomes a separation between you and them. Or if you're talking to somebody about somebody else, it becomes a separation between you and the person that you're talking with and that other person. Therefore, it may be a false sense, this is where the ego comes in, of it's them and it's us, which makes me feel more comfortable to this person that I'm bitching and moaning to and makes them the imposter. So, Ego wants us to judge, the lower expression of the ego does, because it creates a separation so we can try to find ourselves amongst the judgment. Now, like I say, judgment is not a bad thing because if you understand that the ego wants you to find yourself within the other, then you will be able to see that there is no separation at all and you can mirror what it is that you're seeing within the person that you have also. And that is why that judgment has come up because it's about you growing and expanding. Therefore, your individuality is definitely there, but the other person is gifting to you. The person that you are judging is gifting awareness to you, okay? So judgment and awareness, very fine line. When you are coming from a place of joy and expansion and the question, what happens is you have an awareness about something or you have a judgment about something. But rather than taking it into the separation and the them and the me, which is, you know, making it, making you separate from, you go, what is this contribution? What is this growth? What am I available for in this experience of that's been shown to me? What am I available in this experience that is being shown to me when it comes to the mirror of the judgment slash awareness that I am receiving? Everything changes. Your whole entire world changes if you find yourself judging people with more money than you, or like I say, the parenting or the relationships or the way someone dresses or the way someone speaks or the way someone shows up. And you know, you're getting triggered It is because energetically they are being a gift to you so you can evolve and expand your consciousness and drop all the crap that you have picked up with the conditioning and the programming. Your world will change if you realize that you are never, ever judging anybody else. You're simply judging yourself. Now, there is another part of this as well, and that is sometimes calling a spade is calling a spade. Sometimes someone's behavior may be not appropriate and may be violating your standards, right? So when this happens, if it's happening directly to you and your boundaries and your standards are being violated, you have all right to say, nope, not available for this. That is really just speaking up for yourself and holding your grounding, right? It's it's actually you just knowing your value and your worth. You can say, no, you do not speak to me that way. If it was somebody speaking to you, you know, against your standards or um, if it was something inappropriate or, you know, someone's, they just come in and, and, you know, violating your, your boundaries, 
whether it's your business and your relationship or your children, or whether it's a total stranger, you need to know what you're available for and the behavior that you're available for as well. And if somebody doesn't match that, we don't have to judge them. We just say, no, I'm not available for this, right? So we're allowed to have the awareness of what we are available for. So we can't just let people walk all over us and go, oh, I'm not judgmental. This must be creating more. We have to come into the question, am I available for this person? It could be a client. It could be a friend. It could be a parent. Am I available for this behavior or this expectation or to give them what they're asking for? And sometimes it's like, no, I'm not. And rather than getting triggered about it, we can just go, oh, I'm sorry, I'm not available for that. You know, you don't even need to say, I'm sorry. You can just say, no, I'm not available for that. How about this? You can shift your way of communication. So rather than going into this mirror of I'm not good enough, will they judge me? What will they think if I say no? Half of the judgment comes about because we're too afraid to say no or yes. (laughs) So rather than doing that, we just have to go, what are my standards? What are my boundaries? What am I available for? This is something that we go through deeply in my signature program, Magnificent Mediumship, before we even begin. Because if you have loose boundaries and standards with human beings, you will have loose standards and boundaries with spirit. Okay, same, same. So the other thing as well is If you are judging somebody's behavior and it's really not got anything to do with you, right? It's none of your business. They're just triggering you. Please tell me, like, don't tell me this hasn't happened to you, right? (laughs) Um, This happens to everybody. Everybody else is minding their own business and you see someone on social media or you see somebody or something and you just get triggered and it just fucks you off. That person is fucking me off the way that they're eating or they're minding their own business and you're triggered, right? Or maybe it's somebody that you know in your town and every time you see them, you're like, oh, I don't like that person, you know? And it's it's unreasonably judging them and it's not fair and you don't know why you're doing it, but you just can't help it. When this happens, this is the gift. This is the gift where you stop and you go, oh, I feel I'm triggered by you. You don't need to say this to their face. We don't want to go around insulting people, right? We just want to do our own deep inner work because it it heals everything around us. But I'm triggered by you or the way this person acts or what they do or, you know, it just triggers me. I'm judging that person for whatever reason it is. What is the mirror? What is the mirror of why I'm triggered? What does that person have that I have? What is it? Every time it's a gift. Every single time it is a total gift. And every time I go, oh, I'm triggered right now, all the time, even if it's with my husband, if I go, oh, I'm triggered right now, he'll be like, oh, okay. And I'll be like, "Hmm, what is the mirror? What is the mirror? My relationship has changed. My parenting has changed. My coaching has changed. My friendships have changed. My relationship with my, my parents has completely changed. I used to think it was completely unfair and ridiculous that I wasn't accepted as a spiritual coach. I thought that my mother should completely, totally, and utterly accept me for my tarot cards, my pendulums, my crystals, uh, my all the things that I do that is spiritual, that is completely not taught in the Catholic Church that I was brought up in. And I got so judgmental on this. This was a few years ago, quite a few years ago now. I was so judgmental on it that, you know, you would never see little Virgin Marys up there. You would never see, I've got like crucifixes in my house, you know, um, that's kind of by default. They were left here, but I've got crucifixes in my house. I've got Mary and Jesus on the wall. Like I, I work with Mother Mary, like, oh my gosh, I'm so in awe and of this divine, beautiful goddess energy that I channel through. But I don't want a part of it because that is religion. This is spiritual. You are wrong for judging me. How could you? I'm so angry. I'm so mad. I'm so why, why, why? And I sat with that for like a good year after I had the spiritual awakening. I sat with it for so long that it became really obvious that this separation between the spiritual coach and her religious upbringing the ego created separation. I found myself in that separation and what I found to be 
So there was a the silver lining, if you will. What I found to be was I was simply judging myself. And when I realized that judging another that was judging me or not supporting me in the way I wanted to be supported was just simply straight up judgmental. It was solid. It was dense. It was unconscious behavior. It was not of consciousness. The moment I decided that I will not judge you for judging me, all judgment disappeared because the mirror was so divine. The moment I was like, I'm not going to judge the Virgin Mary (laughs) or, you know, um, the people that go to church, the people that I love, I'm not going to judge people's beliefs because, you know, I don't want to be judged. I stopped judging. They stopped judging me. Um, I noticed I felt like people were weird around me, but I stopped judging me. And literally, I didn't feel any judgment from them. It was all about me, always all about me. My relationship with my mum went from weird. <laughs> I went from strained where I was going, mum, don't you think I'm a good person? Like a four-year-old trying to get attention from her mum and her mum going, you know, I don't think what you're doing is good, Victoria, to, hey, mum, what's up? Oh, not much. What are you up to? Sweet. Should we go for a walk? What should we cook for dinner? Normal. It went back to completely normal. We don't talk about our deep you know, belief systems. Of course, sometimes we bring things up, but I know that there is a limit. I know that I will never be able to go as deep, deep, deep as I would desire to share what I do for a job, to share the conversations I've had with her ancestors. Um, I know I can't do that because it's not what she's choosing. There, We've got to understand this with You know, discernment is a really big word as well. Like we must be able to meet people where they are at. Now, no one is right and no one is wrong because if people have a belief system, that is their belief system. That is true. That is true. It is true to them. My belief system is true to me. No one is wrong. And that's the thing about wrong or right or good or bad. It's simply judgment to create separation, which is this ego, which helps us to really understand ourselves and also realize that we are all deeply connected. So the mirror is just so profound when we're doing mirror work, when we're doing shadow work, uh, when we are doing this work on judgment. I have, I can tell if someone's judging me by the way that they're looking at me. So I open up my energy. I flow them so much love and I say, I'm willing for you to judge me. I'm willing for you to judge me. And I don't say this out loud, obviously, again, <laughs> but I drop my barriers. I open my heart and I'm like, I'm willing to be judged. I'm willing to be received and I'm willing for people to see my tarot cards and see my spiritual energy coach on the wall and see my Virgin Marys and see, you know, all the things. And the guarantee is, well, you know, most likely they're not going to judge me. They might think I'm a little bit weird, a little bit woo woo, but the judgment, there might've been a little thought, but the judgment's going to flow through them because I don't give a fuck. (laughs) They judge me because I don't judge me. So therefore, it just disappears. It's not real. I have this conversation all the time in magnificent mediumship, and we work on this in the first few weeks as well, when people are so worried about what their parents are going to think, their husbands are going to think, their children are going to think, their boss is going to think, their siblings are going to think, and friends. And they just get so worried about what's going to happen if they start doing online readings. And that's what I teach how to do in MM. And I literally say, we cannot give a fuck. Now, this is coming from the most highest expression and frequency and coming from love. We want to always lead with love. But once we do this work on judgment and acknowledge the awareness that we have within these judgments, so we come from a higher expression, a really, really high frequency of expansion of consciousness instead of screw you for judging me because or you don't believe that I'm a medium? Like, honestly, like the amount of people that go, but what if they don't believe me? It doesn't fucking matter. It doesn't matter. I said this to one of the girls the other day. If my husband didn't believe me, I don't care because I probably wouldn't buy into all of his belief systems either. I remember when he told me years ago that he didn't believe in heaven and hell. And I've been with him for 22 years since I was 16 years old, just turned 16. 
What? How can you not believe in heaven and hell? Do you believe in God? No. What? You poor thing. I went into pity, right? And this was, of course, there's a bit of indoctrination um, in how we should feel towards someone who doesn't have the same belief system as us. But once we come into this way of living of I lead with love and I believe what I believe and that's all that matters and I'm willing to be judged and I'm willing to do the work, the mirror work, when I am judging another, then I'm here to, to grow in consciousness. I'm here to expand into a multi-dimensional being and be aware of it. Everything changes because you're no longer trying to put yourself into a box. You're no longer being the mercy of someone else's judgment, which is also actually your judgment. You're no longer letting the ego go with the lower expression or judgment coming from the lower expression, you're actually coming from awareness. And the fine line between awareness and judgment is so, so fine because sometimes someone's behavior is not appropriate. Sometimes people are being assholes. You know, we've got to call a spade a spade. But when you take it upon yourself to fix another, to speak your truth, to and it's got say if it's got nothing to do with you of course if it's impacting on you and they've come into your circumstances and you're not appropriate you're like no I'm not a I'm not a you know this is not appropriate I'm not available for this but if this is external from you we see this a lot happening these things external from you and you're literally like oh my god no my brother shouldn't have talked to my sister like that or there's something going on between my parents and my sibling or I've got to fix it. If we go into hero mode, then what we're actually doing is we're dabbling with other people's experience, with their experiment. Unless someone comes to you and says, hey, can I please have your opinion or could you help me out? Or, you know, um, I'm having a hard time. Do you mind holding space for me? You can ask, you can sit there on the question and go, am I available for this? Yes, of course I want to help my sister because she's having a hard time and she's having a hard time communicating with, you know, another person or whatever it is. I'm going to hold space for that person because it's, of course I want to. But when we are basically jumping into other people's business, um, the ego comes in, we're getting off on the drama. We are, yeah, like, the, you know, it feels bad, but it feels good. And it's like, it's like a TV program. It's like a drama. Literally, it's a, that's why they call it drama. We are getting off on that because we are like the pain and pleasure, pain and pleasure, pain and pleasure. It's like a heroin, like hit. That there's a pattern, that there's an addiction. And we can't blame the ego. And we cannot blame judgment for that because they are simply tools for us to expand and grow in this experiment, in this experience of being a human. So as one of my friends says, and I love saying this all the time, but she says it to me as well, slay in your own lane. Look after your family. It's no skin off your nose what people Outside of your family unit, meaning outside of your, you know, where you're living is basically, it's your immediate family, basically. It's no skin off your nose. You just have to let people have their own experience. When we judge, and it actually, I just take that back a little bit, even coming into our households, even coming into our our family units, we still have to let, and I've written this down here as a note, we still have to let our children and our parents and our partners and our siblings have their own experiences. Now, we can give a helping hand. We can say, hey, I'm here for you. I can tell you're having a hard time. But when we fuel their drama or when we really dive into the wrongness of something, we are creating limitations. We are creating mistaken beliefs instead of expanding and creating more. And this is why the coaching industry has exploded. And, you know, I know there's a lot of great coaches out there. There's probably some not great coaches as well, but that's okay. We always get what we require. And the point of a coach is to hold space for you and to not make things wrong but to allow you 
to expand, you know, I, I believe counselors and psychologists are a bit like this as well, allow you to expand on what you already know and come to your own conclusions. And usually there's mirror work. Usually, obviously there's different modalities and stuff, but usually when you are with a person who knows what they are doing, they should at least be at a level of conscious awareness that they don't buy into your story, meaning they believe you, but they don't buy into it and get triggered and go, there's a wrongness, there's a wrongness, right? They hold space and go, what do you know? What do you know? What is the mirror here? What is the actionable step? What requires to be healed? You know, so when it comes to my kids and when it comes to my husband and I literally ask them the question, what do you know about that? Would that create more? How does that make you feel? And I let them come to their own conclusions. And I'm talking about a seven and a nine-year-old here. I've never said you're doing this and you're doing that. I've been like, would you like to do this? Would you like to do that? Where many parents go, you're going to do this and this and this and this and this. I'm like, that's not going to work for me because I desire to consciously you know, bring this energy to my family where they have choice of what they are choosing, of what they are eating. You know, I'm going to serve them up all the food every day. If there'll still be a mushroom on that plate and if they don't want to eat it, they don't have to eat it, but they still have a choice. So it took me a while to, as, as simple as this seems, it took me a while to get to this point and no by any means I am not by no means am I a non-judgmental human being that would be very arrogant to say but I can feel it in my body there if there's a trigger I go oh there's a growth what is this what is this what is this it's always a growth if I find myself creating separation from, I'm like, oh, there's a growth. What is this? What is this? What is this? Sometimes it's more intense than others, depending on the lesson that my soul is desiring to, to learn or what my subconscious is wanting to experience. Um, I, for so long, played this role, and roles come into this judgment thing as well, because I played the role of a big sister and great family beautiful upbringing. I've been very grateful. But, you know, being the eldest child um, of four for most of my life, because my the fifth child wasn't born until I was 18 and I had moved out. But from being the eldest of my siblings, my dad said, so Vicky, you have, you know, this responsibility to show them how it's done. And he still to this day says, you just have one and then the rest just kind of follow suit. So I've heard this my whole life. And then I've always had this kind of insecurity of I'm not bright enough. I'm not this enough. I'm not this enough. I'm not confident enough. So how am I going to help raise these children so they can see their own, their own um, magnificence, their own, you know, be successful? How can they be successful in this world if I'm not all the things that you know, I've, I've got to prove, I've got to prove myself to show that I'm worthy of being a big sister in this role, basically. And it wasn't until about two years ago, I believe, where this came up in a coaching session with my coach. And she took me actually into a timeline therapy. And I literally went in and I said to my parents in this timeline therapy, I can't do this anymore. I want you to see me as the kid that I am. Now, of course, this was not about my parents. It was all about me and the judgments I held and also the, the conditioning that I had perceived and made real. We've got to know this about conditioning and, you know, is that it's how we perceive it through the eyes. And of course, you can get three, my two sisters and myself, so you can get three girls and say, what was your experience of, you know, what happened at this particular time? It might have been the same, you know, scenario. And every person would tell you a completely different story. So the way that we perceive things, we, we filter it differently and we take different things from it. So my point being is when I did this timeline therapy, I went and he healed that little girl and said, look, 
you don't need to carry all the siblings. You don't need to prove your worthiness of being a big sister. It was like this job with these big boots that I tried to fill. And I I carried that until two years ago, and I'm nearly 39. I carried that until I was like 36. And then one day I went, I'm not doing it anymore. Came up in the coaching session, did the timeline therapy. I cried. I was like, oh my God, I didn't even know I was a kid because I had taken on the role of role model. And I didn't want that. I wanted to be me, but I had to behave a certain way. So they behave a certain way. And I took my role seriously at the dinner table. I'm like, don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. You know? So I managed and I was a fucking great manager too. And then I had my own kids and I went, I don't want to manage these kids. Oh my God. I don't want to manage these kids. They're my kids. I don't want to manage them. Right? So where was I harsh on my children, my siblings, right? Where where have I expected a way that people behave? People used to be late. And when I was a hairdresser, if people turned up late, I was like, oh my God, they're late. You can't be late. You've got to turn up on time. What are you doing? It wasn't until years later that I was like, actually, what if being late? Well, who cares? Who gives a shit? <laughs> who cares if they're late? You know? So when we judge, we have to say, where has this actually come from? Does this even belong to us? That was a role that I played in. It was a micromanaging of the people around me. I micromanaged my husband for so long. I expected him to to be a certain way and promise me certain things. And although I thought, blow my mind with the belief system, you know, I was like, one day he'll come around and believe in heaven and purgatory and hell, you know. Um, and now I go to him and say, wow, I it was very kind of one-minded. How did you even deal staying with me for so long, right? And he was just like, because I always loved you for you. And this is what we have to do with other people around us. We may have overbearing, you know, people in our life, but as long as we know our standards and our boundaries and we know when to say no, when it's implementing our energy and we know when to mind our own business, you know, and let people have their own experiences because they're going through lessons. We don't want to micromanage their lessons, especially if it's connected to their sole purpose. Like we need to actually let them experience things. And we need to sit with what the awarenesses are and what the gifts are of judgments. The biggest things I've judged um, the people that I've judged, the situations, the experiences that I've judged the most, where I've been like, what? Like, this is doing my head. And how could that person do that? Why did that happen? Have been the pivotal points in my life. And I can see some of the people on my head right now. I've never, ever really, you know, forgotten about those people because I know that there was some type of soul contract there where I got the lesson, where I had the wake up call, where I grew and expanded. And although I don't choose to have particular humans in my life that may have fucked me off or fucked me over, <laughs> um, I don't hold any judgment because I believe that ultimately when we think we're doing the right thing, we're, we're leading with love. So that makes it, you know, a little bit more layered when you go, okay, so if I was in this relationship and it was, a, say, a narcissistic relationship and my partner treated me like absolute garbage, what, should I not judge that? Well, it's not about judging it. It's about knowing your standards and knowing your boundaries, putting up with what you're available for, and then looking actually at the mirror or the lesson in the growth that you experienced. Of course, sometimes we need to have a coach or a counselor or a psychologist to help us through any locked in trauma if there has been abuse. But ultimately, when we're looking at this judgment piece, there's growth. There is growth in all of it and there's awarenesses. Like I say, sometimes a spade is a spade. Sometimes an arsehole is just an arsehole. And sometimes a belief is a belief. And at the end of the day, we get to have our own because there's free will. And I explained this to one of my clients today when she was trying to intervene in a family affair. I said, at the end of the day, it's like we cannot mess with other people's soul contracts. So why do we dive in? I used to do this all the time in my girlfriend's relationships. I would dive on in 
and be like, you are such a da 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 Or I've, I've judged people. Usually if I've been on alcohol, I'm like, why would you do that and treat that person like that? Are you insane? Later on, I sit back and go, hmm, maybe what was happening there was this divine kind of growth and expansion. And here I am, Miss Injustice Queen. And this is what I said to my client too. We, we cannot get hung up on other people's injustice. We can't. We can hold space for them. We can hold light for them. We can give them offerings. We can be available to be an ear for them to speak it out, to see what is coming up for them. But we cannot fuel the fire because it is not our right. Judgment and justice, really, really interesting energies. And everything has a lower and a higher expression to it. You can tell whether it's heavy and kind of a sinking feeling or light and expansive. What would create more for you? I can honestly say that I have a great relationship with all of my family members. Every single client I have is light and expansive and beautiful, and we work through things, okay? So there, there's, all, there's stuff that we work through. There is trauma stuff we work through, obviously, but I don't have anybody who is an energy sucker in my life. I don't have any uncomfortable relationships. Every friendship, everything in my life is harmonic at the moment. And of course, there'll be times when things will come up for growth and expansion, but I know that I can look at myself first. I know that I am attracting the right people for my evolution and my growth. And I know that anything that comes with judgment or a trigger is a growth or a boundary thing, right? So I hope I've repeated myself enough for you to understand the different concepts that I'm speaking of. And just remember, we're not here to be perfect, right? We're not here to be like, oh yeah, I'm so unjudgmental. Oh yeah, I'm so conscious. Oh yeah, I'm so available. It's like every day is a different day. And some days you might be like, I'm feeling, oh, I'll message my friend. I'll be like, hey, I'm feeling really judgmental today interesting. It's really interesting how I'm feeling judgmental. I wonder what is going on. I wonder what kind of growth I'm having. I'm really curious. I wonder why I'm judging that person or that situation or generally, usually it's myself. (laughs) Why am I judging myself? Why am I judging myself about this? It's interesting. Wow. And it always comes back to a conditioning, a programming, It always comes back to, you know, a person possibly as well. And this is why when we acknowledge, we acknowledge the greatness of ourselves and we do the work on ourselves, we become less judgmental and we stop judging those around us. And you just think about it like a person that you've met in your life, like one of the kindest people you've ever, ever met. And they've never said a bad word about anybody. You think about the vibration that you feel. Like I've got a couple of people in mind that have just popped in. I call them earth angels because They never have a bad word to say about anybody. They're always smiling, even if they're like sick or in pain or anything like that. They're just like, how are you? And they're really, really present. Okay. So with these people around, feel how you feel when you're around a real high vibe, fun, expansive, let's play person. The last thing that you're going to want to do when you're around high vibe, let's have fun, let's play, is bitch and moan about the injustice of the world. And when you are with people that are doing that and you're really getting in there, you're just feeding the monster. You're feeding the fuel. You're feeding the ego. You're creating more of that crap in the world. We're not here to do that. We're here to lead with love. We're here to be compassionate. We're not here to fix or save because there is nothing to fix and save because nothing is broken. Everything is continuously growing and evolving. And if we can give it the space to do that and the grace and compassion with ourselves to grow, we will soon realize that everything is a mirror of us and it never ends. So clients come to me and they go, when am I going to get there? When am I going to feel this? When am I going to be lightened? When am I going to woken up? And I'm like, I don't know, but when you find out, come to me and tell me because (laughs) we have glimpses. We have Um, these beautiful ascension processes. We have big up levels, but whilst we're here on earth, we are in this library of life. 
and it's delicious and it's beautiful and it's painful and it's pleasurable. And if we can use these tools that I, I, I share with you, I share in this open source energy, this free platform, if we can literally look at these tools that serve us and play with them and be in the question and look at ourselves and be willing, willing to learn a new way of communication, little bit by little bit, the world will transform around us. This is what I wanted to share with you today. I'd love to know what your thoughts are. So please leave a, leave a comment. Um, also, I am really desiring to expand this open source energy to really reach those who cannot afford high-level coaches, to really reach those who are awakening, okay? So I've been on this awakening prog- process of you know, desiring to reach those awakening for uh, six years now. Um, so I went through my own awakening and I was like, okay, I want to reach out to those people who needed to hear what I had been through because they may be going through the same thing. And this is when I started my first summit, which was called Mum's Time to Shine. And it was about awakening, awakening to your true purpose. And um yeah, I, I took this deep dive and I said, I desire to help those who are willing to listen. So please, please, if you have enjoyed this free riff channel, if you will, transmission, please share it to somebody who you think would like it. Please share it on your page. Please reach out to me and let me know what you liked, what you thought, um, so I can continue to do this beautiful free resource and know that it's reaching people okay because I'll keep doing it as long as I know that we are reaching people with this message of love and I will see you next time listening to today's episode I trust that you got those golden nuggets that you required to shift your consciousness to expand your awareness and to turn up your capacity I invite you to share this podcast with anyone that you feel would benefit from it and also share the golden nuggets that you have learned with your friends, family, and of course, clients. You can contact me if there's anything that you want to specifically share with me and, or if there's anything you want me to specifically share on the podcast. You can check out the show notes and find me on my socials and myself or my team will get back to you. My heart to yours. Have a beautiful day and I'll see you soon.